Okay, I see it is officially 11 o'clock, so we can kick off. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, and I hope you've all had a great week thus far, but of a short week here in South Africa, but I hope all is well on your end. I thank you for joining me for the launch of this new series titled Boom for Civil Infrastructure Development with part one looking at site design. So let's uncover what this series has in store for us. Of course, uh, all of our webinars are uploaded to our Baker Benz YouTube channel. So if you've missed any of our previous webinars that you'd like to revisit, they are all available on the YouTube channel. And of course, if you have no buddy that didn't make it here today for some reason, they can always go and check it out at the end. Uh, more info about this at the conclusion of the webinar. All right, so this webinar series is focused on development or civil infrastructure development, right? It is going to be a six part webinar series. So most of you I've known uh, for quite some time or are familiar with me uh, attending my previous webinars. I always put myself in my consultant hat when I am doing these webinars. So it's the challenges that you would normally experience in a civil consulting environment. So I put together a six part webinar series. I'm going to build the plane as I'm flying it and see how it goes. Uh, but it's going to be focused on civil infrastructure development for a residential development. I think it's quite a nice uh, spread of uh, design principles to be covered. What we're we going to be looking at today, of course, is site design. But we have in the pipeline roads, stormwater, sewer, water, as well as design visualization. Now, on the right hand side, you would see that the technologies that I plan to use or we might touch on in this series are all, all displayed on your screen. The red box highlighting the superstars, I would say, of the series. That being InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and a big component forming of IDAS. A uh, little bit more info on that later on. Uh, the technologies that are out of the box, we might touch on them, we might not touch on them, depending on how the course of the series goes along, but it's definitely on my bucket list to cover during the series. So it's quite a lot of technologies and I hope that you enjoyed the series. Of course, uh, for you that don't know me, I am Shue Bunis. I'm the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Baines in South Africa. I am a civil engineer, so I'm a civil design consultant, speaker, webinar host, I'm an Autodesk Certified Instructor, Associate Member of SICE, and I've earned the nickname of Champion of Women for Civil Infrastructure here in Africa. I enjoy quite a lot of things. Uh, from that list that you've seen on the screen, I think the only thing I am indulging in quite a bit is coffee. Uh, I learned that I think the rest of them, are, I've kind of pumped the brakes on them due to current circumstances. And of course, if you would like to reach out to me directly, you have any thoughts, ideas, suggestions, recommendations, please feel free to reach out to me and we will can get a conversation going. So as the webinar is progressing, please use the chat box if anything pops up in your mind. If you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, shoot it away into the chat box. I will get to the Q&A and I will answer them at the end of the webinar to keep the flow going. So a little bit about us before we jump into this webinar. I work for Baker Baines. And the, as you can see, we do quite a lot of services or are heavily involved in consulting. Uh, if you're looking at a reality capture or what we term as scan to bim we partner with really two cool brands. Uh, Topcon, if you're on the civil engineering side, mining side, that is your best bet to go. And of course, for the interiors, you would probably look at something like the Leica BLK360, most popularly used for uh, buildings and architectural spaces. So it's a really, really good way to go. It automates as built capture and makes your modeling that much more immersive. Uh, other brands that we look at is Clear Edge 3D. Uh, so Clear Edge 3D, of course, um, it reduces your modeling time from a point cloud by 70 to 75 percent. I've used it to do our design our offices here in uh, Joburg and my modeling got cut down to about 90 to 95 percent. So I've tested it. It's, uh, the webinar is actually on our YouTube channel. You're more than welcome to go and check it out. 
But the technology that I really want to talk about today is IDAS. IDAS is developed by the DevTech group of companies here in South Africa. It's used uh, throughout the world and it stands for Infrastructure Design Automation Suite. It is a very, very powerful tool and when it's combined with Civil 3D, you have a real powerhouse of a design tool for civil design. It has a lot of our localization applied to it for South African markets. So for example, if you're looking at cross sections, uh, South African curbs that we would normally use for road designs, uh, IDAS has those assemblies or cross sections already generated for you. Not only that, when you're looking at pipe network design, so it could be water, sewer, stormwater, it uses our standards and methodologies. So very, very, very powerful. And it's an amazing tool. You're gonna see it in action throughout this webinar series. From an Autodesk perspective, we are a provider select, uh, we listed on the marketplace, we are approved uh, consulting implementation framework, and of course, uh, we are BE level two currently. Uh, last but not least, we do uh, provide cl classroom training. Uh, at this stage, it is done virtually due to our uh, pandemic that's out there. I hope it goes away soon, uh, but we are an Autodesk certified or authorized training center, publisher, and of course, we are a proud partner or producer or provider of CAD learning in Africa. Uh, it is an online tool with all of the Autodesk tools. I think there's about 50 plus software on there that you can learn on your on the go at your own time, 24 seven. It's a learning portal with pre-recorded training videos and it's the best way to upskill as a professional. I use it personally and it has worked wonders. Okay, so that is a little bit about us, a little bit about me, a little bit about the session as well as the series that we have planned for this uh, next coming months and the agenda for today let's have a look so today's session i always put things into perspective you need to know why we're doing it uh, why we're going to be looking at it why what challenges prevail in this space for civil infrastructure development or you could even call it municipal engineering because we are dealing with services so if you have buddies, buddies that do municipal engineering or are in the municipal sector Please uh, tag them in my comments as well as on LinkedIn, and they can also benefit from this series. Uh, then we're going to jump directly into the demo for today. A quick overview. Uh, we're going to look at creating a site, creating it conceptually, bring it into Civil 3D, adding some parcels, which is uh, something that's not really covered much, but I thought it would be quite handy to see. And I'll show you some grading tools so that you can get familiar with Civil 3D. Last but not least, very, very important, the closing, we're gonna look at the key takeaways, how we can actually help you in the space. And then of course, I always like the Q and A. So please shoot your questions and we will capture it or answer them at the end. So let's start off with the industry perspective. What are the challenges faced in civil infrastructure development or municipal engineering? The first one, of course, I think everyone on this webinar can actually relate to this, it's design complexity. With multiple civil elements, design can get messy. I mean, especially if you have a lot of civil infrastructure linking in. And I thought the best example or the quite visual example to use is a development because you've got all of these critical infrastructure provision that needs to be designed correctly, constructed correctly, and work in a resilient manner. So it can be quite messy if, you're, if you don't coordinate it correctly. I've seen this quite a bit in my previous projects and yeah, it can be quite nerve wracking at certain times. The second uh, challenge I have noticed in industry is the coordination part, ensuring that all involved is on the same page. You don't want to be developing or creating a residential estate or a development and you're on the version one of the drawing where the revision you're currently sitting on is actually version three. Uh, I mean, it, it affects everything. I mean, from your grading to your platforms, to your footprints of your buildings, your plots, your accesses for your roads. I mean, it has a ripple effect. So big problem there, especially when you're going onto the construction site, if you come with the wrong set of drawings, it is a big of a problem. Collaborating in the space also becomes an issue because, I mean, you've got the pipe network engineers or the stormwater engineer, you've got the earthworks or site engineer, you've got the geometrics engineer. You, I mean, there's so many people working on you. Of course, the architect, uh, MEP, all of those people need to be 
collaborating successfully so that the project gets done on time within budget and of course you want to be prideful in your work right so collaboration and sharing and incorporation of the latest data is definitely a problem then of course uh, you might have the academic knowledge to do it but if you don't have the right tools it's going to be a nightmare uh, having the right technologies to accomplish the task is very very important so technologies and workflow become a great component of our civil infrastructure in industry and without embracing technology and innovation you're going to be left behind i mean there's so many ways to de uh, to deliver civil infrastructure in much more innovative cooler and much more enjoyable ways compared to the past where we only had AutoCAD, for example. But things have changed and we definitely need to keep up. And last but not least, the visualization aspect, which has become such a critical component uh, recently. A lot of the conversations I've had on LinkedIn and other platforms, everyone in the civil infrastructure industry is really concerned about visualization because yes, we as engineers, or pro civil professionals, we understand the technicalities, why we are doing it. You'll be able to read a technical drawing. But for those that are invested in the project or those, those project personnel that are either funding it or just want to see the end result, that is where a lot of things get stuck because they don't know what they are signing off on, what needs to be approved, and so on. So design visualization is a critical components, especially in these times for civil infrastructure. Okay, so now that we understand the challenges, we're gonna look at this series, how it's going to be eliminating it. That's why I've broken it up into different civil infrastructure elements so that you could, it will be better to, uh, to join the series from the start. However, if you are a road specialist, or if you are only dealing with stormwater or whatever of that type of nature, you can lock in much more better to the topics at hand. So let's jump right into it. Again, I use my <laughs> consulting uh, background here, and I always create a project brief. I like working with this, gives everyone direction on what we are doing, and this is what I have created. So we are going to be as a civil team on this webinar. Yes, we are a team, okay? <laughs> a huge consortium uh, looking at the attendees here, which is fantastic. We're going to be developing the residential estate and we are involved in the civil component of it so during the series we will be going through site design road stormwater sewer water i mean those are the critical elements in any civil infrastructure project for development especially and of course they translate across the board but i thought the development will be quite nice and we will tackle each topic above using BIM technologies today being site design so I have found a random site. As you know, I like working in South Africa. A lot of the content online is either in Europe or America or not here. Uh, local is lacquer, so I always choose a different province. So last time I think I was doing Cape Town. Yes, it was Western Cape, the roads and tunnels webinar. We are now in KZN, so I found a place just off Belito. And yes, you can see this is gonna be our site to develop a nice cool place right at the beach. So where do you start? So first of all, we have InfluWorks, which is a fantastic tool to start off your design. Generally, the problem faced here is if you are tendering for a project or if you want to pitch for it or you don't have the survey data, which sometimes is very delayed depending on appointment and processes that are either municipal or whatever, it holds up your design process because you don't have anything to work off. I mean, if you used Google Earth and stuff, you would get elevation profiles to a certain extent. However, you don't have terrain data to actually start any of your design. InfraWorks provides you with a conceptual terrain layout based on its geos geospatial engine. And you can use that for your design. Now, the advantage of this is once you do receive the detailed terrain data from your surveyor, you can import that directly into the model so that you don't have to start from zero. You can incorporate it and adjust your infrastructure elements to reference that detailed survey. So how does this work? So previously, I normally did a video on this, which is quite short. I thought making a flow diagram will actually help you guys much more better. So how would you create a 3D site using InfraWorks? Now, the function that we use is the model builder. 
Now, when you start on InfraWorks, as you can see, I'm going to be using 2022 versions here. Um, you can use 2021. Of course, it's always better to be on the latest version, uh, especially now that time has passed and these service packs have been released. So when you open up InfraWorks, you will see that there is a button called the Model Builder. You will click on that, and then you would get that screen that you're seeing here, me this small one here, that will pop up to ask you to please go and type in where you would like to create your site or the address. Now, this is the block that you would normally enter, enter it. As you can see, I just put a Bolito Dolphin Coast because I just find sites and I, and I use it. I think it keeps it much more interesting. Some of, some of the times it's actually very cumbersome, but uh, I think it works. Of course, in your case, you will know the exact location of your site and it will be very realistic to develop on there. Right, a lot of insight into that. So you would enter the, the address. And of course, these blocks here, these are like crop boxes. So you can crop the model to a certain extent. You can draw a polygon, or you can capture it by a viewport, and that will be created in your model. So once you've typed in the address of your site and you have cropped it to your reasonable area, you will then need to give it a name. So BIM for Civil Infrastructure Development. I'm just keeping it the name of the webinar. I've added a description saying Belito KZN. And of course, you will set the appropriate coordinate system. So whichever ALO system you're working in, that's the one you're going to set. Thereafter, once you hit Create Model, you will get this pop-up that says we are preparing your new model. And InfraWorks will send you an email to say that your model has been successful. It will come in like that. So you would receive an email to say, hey, uh, your email, your model has been created. You are now able to access it. So that is the workflow or the process that you would apply, the steps that you would apply to create a model in InfraWorks. Now let's have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so my model is very big. It does not need to be this big because as you remember in the Google Earth image, it was just a portion, but I just wanted to show you how awesome this is. Now, this is the model that we created. Let's just take a quick spin around. As you can see, uh, it has the terrain, it has the sky, it has the ocean that it's captured, those type of things that are required. We can always change or toggle to an engineering view where we can actually view the contour data. So like I said, you are already given a prelim data to work off. And as I zoom in, the contours become more visible. Now, this already has put you ahead in your design process because if you are waiting for your survey data to come, chances are you are sitting at 0%. Now, already you have the geolocated model. You have a 3D visual realistic way of, of your site. And this can be incorporated into the further steps of the design. So now that we created a 3D visual model, the next step is to grade the site conceptually in InfraWorks. Now, a lot of people do not use this feature, but I think it's quite useful. I am gonna show you how you can grade in InfraWorks and then take it into Civil 3D for much more detailed design. Of course, you are definitely gonna need Civil 3D because it gives you more control on the technical aspects and stuff like that. But this gives you a good base. Now, generally, we have two options here. In Civil 3D, I mean, in InfraWorks, you have the grading option, which you're gonna see right now. And you can also create something what we call a coverage. Now, we, the, the pros and cons of each one is as follows. If you use the grading option, you will be able to get the associated terrain or the proposed ground for your platform or whatever you're grading which is absolutely great. You will be able to get the elevations that you're looking for. You can then import that into Civil 3D and then you can work off that as is. The disadvantage with that is when you draw the extent of your, of your platform, the poly line does not come through. Whereas when you do grade and when you do coverages, the extent of the poly line comes through, but the associated surface doesn't. It has been done like this for application purposes, 
but because it has the word grading in it, I thought I'll show you the workaround or a pro tip on how you could actually use this. So let me show it to you now that you have some background. Okay, so this is our model. So what I would do, so I'll go to the create tab in InfoX, and you can see here there is courage, but we are going to be using grading area. Now you have a, a lot of different materials that you can use for the grading, the coverage. Uh, I'm going to use grass for now. And I simply just plot out the extent of my grading platform. Again, you will know more better on the extent of your, your platform. If you had the setting out data or the extent of it from a land survey or something like that, you could import that land XML already and they'll put you ahead of the curve. But I'm being realistic here and saying that, look, you're normally not gonna get that data that early. I mean, it's awesome if you do, but in most cases, in my experience, you normally receive that data quite late. So let's say this was our platform and we, we plotted it. We can always edit it. So a lot of people feel that once you drop it in, you can't change the vertices. I can, I can even type in an exact XY coordinate for each corner, okay? So just to show you again, I can move the vertices as I would like. You can see the X is updating, right? As well as the Y. And I'm doing this quite a bit because I wanted to show you how it updates. I can even move the entire platform as is. I'm not gonna do that, but it does become handy. And of course, if you do feel you need to fine tune stuff, you can actually do it in InfoWix. You can even add additional vertices. So if those vertices weren't enough, you're more than welcome to add. I've just kept them to five because I don't want you to keep seeing me zooming in and out of the screen. I can also adjust the elevation at each corner. So that is very, very important for drainage and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to grading, InfoWorks has a lot of pre-built gradings that you can edit according to your own slopes. So you can see threes to one, you've got a 10 meter offset, those type of things. But when I apply it, it might look like nothing happened, but let's see. Can you see the cut here? Let's zoom in. All right, so it's using intelligent sloping already in a conceptual design tool for grading. And you can see there is the fill there. I've used Rockville here, for example, I think it'll look quite nice. I can also raise the entire platform. So just to show you how intuitive this tool is, can you see everything updated instantly? Right, the grading is there, the slope has been maintained. Of course, that is not practical. I can even drop, like I said, edit the elevation of the vertices and it will update instantly. You can also see that it is giving me the area. I'm just gonna undo this to bring it back. I just wanted to show you guys that it is fully editable and you have a lot of control. And just bear in mind, this is a conceptual design tool. But look at the detail and flexibility that you have already at this stage. So this is my platform, this is our platform, <laughs> and we're gonna be uh, detailing this as we go along. Okay, so you can see already how far we have already ascended into the design process. Just, I want you to con contextualize it because think of what, what you would do at this stage, not having any uh, reliable data. You might have some CAD depending, but what are the odds, okay? We have already got the platform at a level that we can actually do design on it. We've also got the cut and fill that has been generated as you've seen there and we've got the extent and of course the elevations of each vertice. Now the next step is how do we take this to a detailed design environment? It's quite awesome. Uh, like I said technology plays a huge role in our infrastructure delivery process and with the workflow that's supported here we can now take this InfraWorks model directly into civil 3D without losing any intelligence. So there's zero data loss and we can engineer it to a detailed technical level. So let's have a look. So here I am in civil 3D and I'm gonna be using the DevTech templates, right? 
they have created the best civil 3d template i have ever seen i use it personally if you want to download it you're more than welcome to head on to their website if you just google devitech you will see that it is available for download you just have to create a sign in account it's like a gmail it's free and then you can actually play around with it in your civil 3d processes now that i have it open i'm going to go and open my influx model and let's go and select it so here is my model i will hit open you can see it's sqlite you can work with imx as well whichever you prefer in this case i'm going to go with sqlite and i'm going to set the coordinate system you can see we are using lo29 in this case and i can filter the type of objects that i want right so for example i can bring in everything i can bring in design objects or let me show it to you that if i go and select refine selection this gives me the flexibility to tick off and on models so i can take off the terrain i can exclude roads water areas if i want to reduce my model or i can select or crop my model using area of interest in this case i'm going to bring in the entire model okay it will take a few seconds to import and here we are now can you see what we have already this is detailed design info and if you look on the top right the geolocation tab is on meaning that it is geolocated okay so we've got our surfaces now if it looks like this we can change it now with this template it's amazing the amount of surface styles that are pre-built into it i mean look at that list all right you've got render material that you can assign but look at the amount of styles that are pre-built you don't have to create them so let's say we're going to go look at triangulation i can go and set this on and if i zoom in you can see the triangulation is there if you imported your surface as a land xml the triangulation that is normally generated will come in as is from the surveyor so let's go and look at this in the object viewer now this is normally like a 3d viewer that's built into civil 3d just to help you design your your draw or your infrastructure better or visualize it in a better manner and if i put on let's see which one shall we use let's go 3d wireframe you can see what's happening exactly with the triangulation you can also edit this using triangulation tools if it has joined incorrectly which is very rare but you do have that flexibility now just to show you that it has picked up the terrain data or the extent of the site i can actually switch that on that is actually a surface but just to show you that i am not bluffing i will go and select the surface so let's go use a colored one right so contours i think let's see let's go half meter and one meter intervals and check that out so there is contour data that is already set in here and if we go to the object viewer we can actually see it how it looks all right so the terrain data came through our platform surface came through the road that's probably going to form our access in the later webinars are going to come through and there is the surface data that came through from infraworks right so all of the data will be listed in your prospector tab and you can go and access it as you would need to so seamless transition and importing of conceptual data to technical design environment has been done so we can tick that off so as you can see i mean already how much better this is i mean we're not losing anything whether you use 2d snaps or whatever visualization tool those are zero when it comes to usability whereas here we are using everything from the start of our design process now the next thing is to create the grading of the site or the design of the actual platform now you can add a lot of i mean drainage can get very very uh, complicated or it can get quite detailed but to give you the understanding and the basis of applying it on your own on your own which i always want at the end of every webinar i've reduced the vertices that's why we have five but you can go at it at intermediate points at key points as you would like and grade it accordingly but how would you do that let's see the process on how you would grade it now remember we used the grading tool 
in InfluWorks. And as you can see on your screen, we only have the surface extent of the platform, but there is no holy line. So there's no line that we drew or that shape that we created in InfluWorks is not here. Now, that is not a problem. I'm going to show you how we can actually just mimic it again. So let's zoom in here. You can see the triangulation is on. What I will do is I will create a feature line. If you're not familiar with feature lines, feature lines will possess elevation data and it's very useful for, a, for multiple civil objects and designs, right? So you would just need to apply it as you would need to. I will give it a name just to keep it simple for this webinar and I'll hit okay. Now, what this will allow me to do is I will zoom in with my AutoCAD snaps on and I will trace out the corner or the, the elevations. As you can see, it has picked up the elevation of that platform. So you don't even have to worry about typing in an elevation. This is the advantage of your prelim design. And when you go to the next point, it actually shows you the drop or the grid, change in grid. I mean, that is quite awesome. And you can even edit it if you'd like. So if I didn't want that 0007, I could enter my own value as I would like it to be. Okay, so I am just tracing this out. You can see it is quite easy. I have tried not to zoom in and out as much as I can because I know it's quite tough to follow. Uh, right, so let's just get that corner. And then at the end, I'm just going to use the close command in Civil 3D so that it will join it perfectly. And here we are. Now we have the extent of the platform in a CAD format. Now here is where we can go assign grades and elevation. As you can see, I can enter my own levels or different levels at each corner, and I can adjust the slope or fall or rise as I would like. So it's the exact same principles, whether you have these many vertices or you have more, the principle is exactly the same. So you can understand why I've just kept it simple because I don't want to keep zooming in and out for this webinar. So if I hit no display, I have toggled off that surface. And now that we have the extent of our platform, we can start grading it in a engineering manner. So I will give this a name. Civil 3D works with grading groups that are associated to each element or each infrastructure grading system. So you can have multiple gradings on the same site so that they are interactive, or you could keep them on different sites so that they cannot be interactive. So I will put on the volume base, I will target it to my existing ground, and I can just give it a name, I will accept the defaults for now, and on the left you can see it has created a surface. Now there are many options to create gradings, there's distance, elevation, relative, we're going to use surface because it's the most economical, and we are going to start creating our site. Now, I want it to slope on the outside. As you can see, I can specify grow, slope or grade. I think one is to two slope is perfect for this, and I will leave it as it is, and I am done. Right? It might not look like anything happened, but let's just let us continue. I'm going to create a full for this because, of course, as you can see, now it has generated the triangulation surface for me based on my elevation data. And of course, I can go and edit this by expanding the chevron. Not only that, I can go and check or compute the materials. As you can see, it has already calculated the cut and fill. Uh, generally, when we are doing a development, it's nice to have it to a full level. Of course, if the terrain dictates a cut level, then you would go that way. I mean, you still have to apply your engineering technical knowledge on here, right? So you have to be realistic. And here we are, I have got now the surface for my platform or the grading. Let's change to conceptual. And if I zoom in, you will be able to see where the cuts and fill are. So for example, on this corner, we've got a fill and so on. So again, apply your engineering practicality when you're doing your design. That comes from more experience, reading up and stuff like that. And you can see there's a cut as well. So here we are, again, zero data lost. We've got our platform at the level that we'd like. We can, of course, still edit this by adding more vertices, more uh, grading points and stuff like that. But I am going to leave it as it is. What we will do just to keep this much more visual, I will keep the surface style to border. 
Uh, that's the advantage with the DevTech Civil 3D templates. It has a lot of styles that you're going to use. And this is where we are right now. Okay, so site design done and dusted, right? So we've got it to a technical level where we can, where we have elevations at each corner point or each vertice. We have the associated slope or rise or fall from those points uh, based on either your drainage map or how you would like to engineer your site. We can go and add more, we can edit them, and we've got the quantities already available, okay? And this is starting from a 3D platform coming to a technical platform. Now, the part that I've added that a lot of us don't really do is creating parcels or plots. Now, generally, when you receive the cadastral data, it comes from a registered land server because they would do the extent of it. But how can you incorporate the data that you receive? So let's, you can use it. They normally give it to us in like in a CAD format or AutoCAD format, which is fine. You can, the process that I'm going to show you right now works exactly the same. I have used it in a shape format to show you that you can bring in GIS data into Civil 3D. So let us have a look. All right. So here is our platform that we had done and dusted. Okay. I'm going to isolate everything because I want to keep the screen clean when I'm working with this data. Now, I will import the cadastral data from the land surveyor. Maybe he has uh, access to these plots that are confirmed currently. Maybe more will come in the future, but he has shared that data with me and I'm going to import it. All right, so you can see it is in a shape file. And when I bring it in, you can see it is coordinated. So we are working on the Allo 29 system here in South Africa, hard to be a SOOP 94. And when I import it in, the CAD comes in. So these are normal CAD elements, right? So if you gave me the AutoCAD, you could also XREF that or import that. But what I'll do is I'm going to use the plot function or parcel function in Civil 3D to convert this to plots, right? So maybe it'll help us with our engineering design. Now, again, with the template that we're using, it is quite amazing. There are a ton of styles that you can use. I mean, look at that. Okay. The one I'm probably going to use is residential. Of course, these are just styles that are assigned to it. I think residential one will work. And I can set a label style. Okay. I can set whichever one I want. I can erase that CAD if I don't want it. But when I hit OK, you will see this is the result. Now, if I zoom in, you can see it already labeled each plot for me. But maybe I don't like this display because now I can't see the extent. Civil 3 works with styles. So what I can do is I can actually just edit this quite quickly. right? If you're a new user, please make a copy of the style. I know Civil 3D, so I can actually do this. It's much more safer to create a copy if you are new. And this is better. right? So now I can actually see the extent of each plot or earth, and I can work with this accordingly. Now. We might need to reorder the naming of this. Now, what I mean by that, let us zoom in here. As you can see here, these are not labeled sequentially or logically. I mean, you've got uh, 23, 18, 13, 9, 5. And if you're a bit OCD with me when it comes to design, you like your stuff to look quite clean and sharp, right? There is a rename function that a lot of people don't make use of. And I'm going to show it to you right now. So first, I want to adjust that display. So I want to use a different style. And I'm going to toggle it so that we can see the plot number as well as the area, so in meters squared. right? So here we are. We've got the numbers. And you can see these are the associated areas. right? So we've got 1,600 for most of them. And the numbers are not logical or not sequential. So if I, I want it to start, let's say that should be parcel or plot one, and it must proceed to the right. OK, so it must increase in number to the right of the screen. I will use the rename tool in Civil 3D. I can start it at an increment that I like, and I can just hit OK. And I will just need to draw a line in the direction that I want it to go. So it's going to go to the right there. As long as it's touching the parcels, it's good. So you can see I am sketching the direction of naming. 
I mean, this might be quite new to a lot of you out there, but it's been around like forever. I want to come there and I want that to be the last plot in name. And once I do that, if I zoom in, you can see now it has been labeled sequentially. So one, two, three, and so on. So one, two, three. It's perfect. And if I go to the last parcel, you can see it's number 37. So we are good to go on the development front. I can end the isolation. So I can bring back the relative data. And with the beauty of geolocation, you should see that this will sit perfectly according to our design. Okay, so you can see the coordination factor here is fantastic. So we have our site done and dusted. There might be more cadastral data that might be received later that I could import uh, just to do the rest of the site. But from a site perspective, we are done. Okay, so you can see I kept it technical, but also not so technical so that you guys can actually follow on. I don't want to go above anyone's head here or make it too complicated. If you follow the same procedure that I did today, you will be good. All right, so the key takeaways for today, we used InfraWorks as our starting point. The benefit for this was we had prelim or conceptual data. Again, I'm using prelim or conceptual data. It is not final data. The data that rules above all of that when it comes from the, to the terrain is from the surveyor. Surveyor is king in that space. So you will import that data, bring it in at a later stage in InfraWorks or Civil 3D and design off the latest terrain data. Once we had a 3D conceptual site, which is beautifully geolocated, it was very visual in nature, we graded it in InfraWorks, where it gave us a starting point on how our platform should look, or what we are looking to achieve. Once we were happy with that, when we adjusted the extents of the site, the vertices, the elevations, and so on, we took that data as is and imported it into Civil 3D for detailed civil engineering design. This is where we traced out the extent of the platform and we created a, a feature line from it, which was attached to elevation as well as grading data. So we had the slopes from each vertices and so on, which we could either modify using the elevation editor or we could add according to our design later on. Once we were happy with the elevation, we then graded it according to our cut and fill design parameters that we're looking for in the design. We use a slope with one to two and we graded it accordingly. We had a look at the platform and we saw that the cut and fill slopes had been generated. Okay, if you had to raise the elevation of the platform, the slopes would be much more visible. I mean, that is basic engineering. And then last but not least, the thing that I added that might be useful to you, might not be useful, is creating parcel and plots for houses so that if you receive the CAD layout for the development that you're doing, it could be in a CAD or AutoCAD format, or it could be in a GIS shape format. You can import that directly into Civil 3D, into your detailed design, ensure that it, it should be geolocated, of course, so that it sits flush or exactly where it needs to on site. And then you can convert that to plots or earths or parcels, whatever terminology you would like. You can renumber them accordingly so that it looks much more better and sharper and your site can now be developed further. So part two will look at inserting roads into this development, how we can structure it, how we can generate it, especially setting up for stormwater which should follow in the following webinar and so on. So you can see this webinar is gonna be very insightful. Again, I, I have received feedback like on my previous webinars where it was a bit too technical for users to grasp. So this one, I am gonna keep the basic concepts in mind, help you understand what you are doing, which is the most important thing, and then build on your technical capacity. Okay, so that is what we have covered for today. So how can we help you in this regard? Like what can you, we do to help you be better civil infrastructure designers? How, how, how exactly, what can we do? So our motto or what we believe in here in our company at Baker Benz is we solve our customers problem through digital transformation. 
helping them to design and make a better world. And these webinars, all I've done so far, strive to this. I want you to fish for yourself rather than be dependent. But of course, being industry leaders and thought leaders, we are here to help. So I've broken this down into three elements that you can help. I thought of it from a professional perspective. I put myself in you guys' seats, and this is your three options. The first one, I think all designers end up getting stuck here somehow, is do it yourself. Now, we have a tool called CAD Learning, which I've touched on at the beginning of this webinar. It is an online portal with already pre-recorded videos, step-by-step -step tutorials, that you can watch and apply to understand the methodologies that you would need to do your design. This is available 24 seven, as long as you've got internet connection, you just log in via Google or whatever, and you get learning up and running. Okay, there's a lot of different softwares from the civil infrastructure space. My favorites are InfraWorks, Civil 3D, Vehicle Tracking. Uh, yeah, there's so many, there is so many that you can learn, Revit is there as well. And it's good because if you get new projects and maybe you want to do a steel portal at some stage, like advanced steel is on there, you could learn that. So you could learn a variety of software and become versatile as a professional. I mean, you should have this zeal to be better. I do, and I hope that you all also share the same sentiment. So first step is to do it yourself. The next step is, of course, let us show you. I mean, this is the whole reason that we have these webinars to give you insight on the correct technology to use, how to apply it, what is possible, what is achievable. Uh, we give you a few, few pro tips here and there. And it's just to create awareness in our industry for digitizing the civil infrastructure industry. Right? If you wanted to get much more comprehensive knowledge, you could attend a full training course with us. All right, so InfraWorks, Civil 3D, Revit, Inventor, AutoCAD. I mean, we specialize in the AC and PIM industries or manufacturing industries. So we are across the board. But since this is the civil infrastructure webinar, I've listed what you would probably use Civil 3D, Revit, Inventor, AutoCAD, vehicle tracking, and so on. So you can come in for trainings and some of our courses are CPD accredited, like for example, InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and AutoCAD. They have been accredited. So you would get CPD points for it. Um, if you just need the basics, so let's say you, you're a bit familiar with the software, but you just want to get going, we have Kickstarter courses. Now, these are not as comprehensive as the training that have, I have been uh, talking about above, but it gives you the basics to just get running. So you don't want to be a pro at it, but you just want to attend, get familiar to where the buttons are and stuff like that and do some tasks. We've got Kickstarter courses just for you that do that. So it's a really, really win there. And of course, if you are a pro at the software or maybe you above fundamentals level and you've got specific topics that you need to topic at it, like to, to tackle at an intermediate or an advanced level, you can always get in contact with me. You can send me the stuff that you would need to do. We can look at the topics and we can create a customized course tailored to your needs. Okay, so that's also very good. So you're well-rounded on how you could do it yourself or of course, we can help you out. The last one is my favorite one. It's let's do it together. All right, so I've had worked with a lot of consultants in South Africa as well as abroad, and we can actually show you how you can apply the technology on a project that you have. So I've worked on many projects. Uh, you've seen like in my previous SciC webinar as well as online, worked with HHO Consulting Engineers. We got together, we, we worked as a team, and we got the project done and busted. So we, you can select a project, we can scope it, we can have a chat, and then we can do it together. So you learn on the, on, on the go, as well as get your work done at the same time. So it's like a win-win type of situation. From a director perspective, if you're a technical director or a business owner, and you wanna optimize your processes, we can do technology workflows assessments, we can standardize it and make it that much more better as a team. So we look at how you're currently doing things and we can propose a way forward. And last but not least, if it's too complex or overwhelming and you're just starting the, the journey of them or getting up and running, being competitive, just reach out to me. I mean, most of you have me on LinkedIn. You can follow us on LinkedIn as well, or you can drop me an email. So that is my options for you. I hope they make sense. Uh, we base it on our IADOP methodology that you can see here, where it revolves around 
assess, educate, and consult. And the key factors for that is people, process, and technology. So if you want to follow us online or reach out to us, those are all of our handles. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube being a very popular hit at the moment. A lot of our events as well as past webinars uploaded there. Uh, once this webinar recording has been uploaded, you should receive a notification if you are subscribed to our channel, as well as I will share this on LinkedIn. So again, if there's anyone that you know that missed it, you're more than welcome to reshare my post or even tag them in the comments. And of course, if you are our uh, customers or subscribe to us, we have a support test that's open from eight to half past 11 at night, which is quite insane, uh, just to help you get out and get your work done. Of course, if you want to reach out to me directly, those are my handles, uh, LinkedIn, of course, the most popular one, just search my name, you should find me there. Uh, or if you want to reach me via email, that is my email address, shuaib at bakerbains.com. You can see I do a lot of stuff in the technology perspective. Uh, primary focus, of course, is the civil infrastructure tool, so InfraWorks, civil 3D, reality capture for Recap Pro, vehicle tracking, and so on. Uh, I do delve into the other software technologies when I need to, uh, but you're more than welcome to reach out to me for anything civil infrastructure design and scan to them. Of course, I can help you uh, with all of those things listed on the screen. All right, so with that, we will open up the Q&A. I will put my uh, slide back on in case you want to jot down my email just now, but let me know what you think. I mean, if you have any comments, questions, I hope you fire them away. I will now go and check the chat box and see what we have received. Okay, so there's a question here regarding the feature lines. I think I did answer it, but I will again. Can you add additional points to your already drawn platform? I hope I'm reading it correctly. Yes. So when you do create a feature line, you do have an option that when you do select it, there's an option to add a vertices or add a point. You can also delete points, right? So think of it as same as a polyline with just much more intelligence. So you can add additional points that you might encounter as you would get deep into your detailed design. So that is fully flexible. Generally, what users do is they will draw it in a polyline and convert that to a feature line. So there's many ways that you can do it. Choose the way that you are comfortable with. But yes, to answer your question, you definitely can. Can you, okay, there's a question here, sorry. Uh, can you, let me see if I'm reading this correctly. Uh, can you incorporate your design with Autodesk Docs? Yes, yes, you can, yes. Sorry, I, the question got like cut off in this text for some reason, but the my understanding of the question is, can you back this up to a cloud system? Yes, you can. Uh, if you've been watching these videos, you should see that when I opened up Civil 3D, when I opened up InfraWorks, there is an option to access the model from Autodesk Docs. I will incorporate it in the future webinars in the series. Reason uh, being that I do it like this because a lot of people don't start it off in the cloud. But just to show you that once you have your design to a reasonable state, you can actually upload it to Autodesk Docs which is now part of the AEC collection for Autodesk. So if you do have the AEC collection, you already have access to it for free, okay? So you can upload your stuff on there, you get your team on there, share it from there. Uh, the only difference is you would need BIM Collaborate Pro, uh, previously known as BIM 360 Design, to link in data shortcuts and stuff like that directly to Civil 3. But if you're looking at simply storing and sharing and commenting and markup, creating markups and stuff like that in a secure environment, BIM360 or Autodesk Docs is your way to go. So good question there. Okay, there's a question here. Is there a possible workflow between InfraWorks, Civil3D and Revit? Yes, there is, right? 
I actually covered this in my Roads, Bridges and Tunnels webinar that just finished, uh, the series just finished recently. You can check that out on our YouTube channel, but yes, there is. Uh, just to give you a quick, short, but not that technical answer, there is a shared coordinate uh, function that's built into Civil 3D and Revit so that the coordination between the site and the positioning is aligned. Uh, once that has been done correctly and your geolocation is done, everything fits in perfectly. So yes, the workflow does work. InfraWorks, Civil 3D and Revit, um, it's used quite popularly when it comes to bridge design. So yes, to answer your question. What will part two entail? Okay, okay, I think you probably joined late, but part two will be looking at roads. So I'm gonna insert some roads into our development. I hope I, it looks quite neat because I need to figure out how I'm going to make it look quite nice. Okay, so I'm going to import that and you're going to be able to see some of the cool functions that you can use for Civil 3D and IDAS to generate those roads very, very, very quickly. So if you are interested in that, please, uh, like I said, add me on LinkedIn or follow our YouTube channel, follow our Baker Men's uh, handles. I'll just put on my slide again. So if you would like to, to add me, I will definitely post when this is coming up. So just keep your eyes peeled. I'll also pay, uh, post the recording link on LinkedIn so that you can go have a watch at your own time. But yes, part two will be on road design. Okay, I think that is it. I don't have to see any other questions on here. Thank you all very much for joining this webinar. I hope it was clear, it was concise, uh, it answered your questions on how you would proceed on the project. I hope that you applied well on your end and I look forward to seeing you to part two very, very soon. So have a great Friday, uh, take care and we will all catch up soon. Bye everyone.